What is up, alien army? I am Oculus, the alien next door, purveyor of esoteric lore. And on this channel, we discuss everything out of this world. So today's topic, we are going to be discussing uh, the topic of the question that I asked in my community posts from I don't know how many days ago, but basically I asked what um, celestial body and astrological sign and house you wanted me to talk about in one of these, I don't know, chit chats. And the one that I saw had the most requests was Jupiter, Sagittarius, ninth house. And I don't have any videos on those uh, topics as of right now up on my channel. So, um, who the fuck are. So uh, I am going to let you know that this broadcast is going to be guided by Marduk and I spoke of Marduk briefly in another one of my videos. I did uh, have an open invitation if he wanted to come through so I could channel him, relay some messages for you all from him and so he came through earlier today which is why this video is going to be guided by the hand of Marduk. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that name but I mean he called me calling him Marduk so that's what I'm going to do. The reason you ask why I'm fucking mentioning Marduk is because Marduk is the, he's the ancient Mesopotamian Babylonian god and he is associated with uh, thunder and lightning, thunderstorms, and he's also depicted on his Mashushu dragon or holding a Mashushu dragon or something with the Mashushu dragon, right? And uh, this simply means that he's conquered the reptilian aspect of his mind. He's conquered the primordial urges, so to speak, of the reptilian portion of the brain. Now he is operating in a higher octave of the reptilian energy. So that's just a brief synopsis who Marduk is. And the reason why Marduk is coming up in this broadcast is because the equivalent of Marduk is the gods Jupiter, Apollo, and Zeus. And Marduk, obviously, because the ancient Mesopotamian and Babylonian uh, civilization, this was like the first, you know, the cradle of life, the fucking fertile crescent, right? So Marduk is like the great, 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 great grandpappy of these others, right? But they're all the equivalent. So that is how he's fitting into when we're talking about Jupiter, Sagittarius, ninth house. And uh, as you can see, I have my magic wand and a fucking cape on. So, uh, yeah, and I'm going to be replaying the same fucking song over and over again because that's how I roll here. Anyway, so I might be receiving some messages like from Marduk uh, candidly whilst this video is being filmed, but I do have a few other verbatim quotes that I have in my voice notes here. So there's going to be a few messages uh, from him and then there's going to be also messages that he has in regards to the astrological topic that uh, you guys requested that I speak about. So... Uh, let's see. So his symbol is the Mashushu dragon. I already got into that. And uh, the energy of Marduk, okay, is is larger than life. That's how he wants to express to me because if we want to think of the representation of a thunderstorm, it is considered a force of nature. And uh, interestingly enough, this is just what he's kind of letting me let you know is that Marduk was elected to come through to the first civilization in the Earth Matrix, right? Or one of the first. Like, you know, history is so jacked up. Where Are we ever going to really know? But this is what he, this is direct from the source, so I'm going to just go with it. So he's saying that he was elected, you know, because of his specific gifts to bestow the knowledge of creation upon the motherfuckers that were residing in that ancient empire. And he bestowed this knowledge because uh, if we want to think of the earth as a terrarium the earth 3d matrix that's what it is it's a fucking terrarium that was created by others right it was created by other creators so creators created creators and the the way that he came through marduk and i'm not saying he's the only one that came through because this video is about him we're taking his perspective so from his specific gifts uh thunder and lightning the lightning bolts of clarity the force of nature the thunder right the thunderstorm right if you ever hear that stereotypical phrase like i am the storm you know what i'm saying uh, a lot of <laughs> juicy tidbits in that phrase you know what i'm saying because you have i and then you have i you know you know anyway i uh, don't want to digress too much but basically he's saying that that's a force of nature and that's how he came through because if we want to think of the terrarium 
and like earth creatures than we, we see typically depicted in movies that a UFO will a lot of times be portrayed as coming through to the 3D Earth matrix from the clouds from above in a thunderstorm, in thunder or lightning, right? That's a higher intelligence that's visiting the Earth matrix to do something, okay? Whether to convey a message, to conduct a study, whatever the fuck it's doing. That's how Marduk came through to the whoever he came through. I don't, I don't know, I'm not a historian, so whoever he came through to the enlightened seekers, I guarantee you that they were enlightened seekers, who, whoever the fuck they were going on in that Mesopotamian, Babylonian empire. He came through in a bolt of lightning and a flash of thunder. He came through as a force of nature. If we want to think of the energy of fucking Jupiter, right? Jupiter, he a big, bad, broad-shouldered motherfucker. Like, he has confidence. He's just coming through. He's like, boom, boom, boom. Like, he got his Sagittarius on, okay? You know what I'm saying? So, that's why, you know, Jupiter is Sagittarius. And then ninth house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, um, that's how he came through. And that's how he was bestowing information upon these uh, individuals that were living at that time. The enlightened seekers. And he basically was telling them the story of their creation. You know, the creation of the, the humanoids um, and the little terrarium. Uh, and, and that's how he presented himself. He came in a cloud of thunder and lightning from another dimension. So if you want to take that as literal or figurative as a metaphor however you want to take it that is how he came through he came through and presented information to them at that point as a force of nature and he uh showed he indicated that he did conquer the reptilian portion of his brain that is the representation of the mashushu dragon okay so if we want to think of the reptilian portion of the humanoid brain then we have the higher octave of that is reptilian energy that's in the ethers so uh, the reptilian portion of the brain, it governs just primal instincts. Now, this one, because Marduk has conquered that, he is enlightened. And now he's operating in the reptilian portion of the energy that is primal instinct of the soul. Okay, not primal instinct of the physical vessel, but primal instinct, primordial urge of the soul. And that's the message that he was telling them. So, um let's see there are a few voice notes that i have here okay so his energy he's saying this is him verbatim this energy is larger than life and this energy that's larger than life the channeling and all of that the the thunderstorm he is saying that that is the perspective that one ideally would want to possess when they are conducting their affairs in the 3D Earth Matrix terrarium. Those are, that's just how, larger than life because the soul's energy, the reptilian aspect of energy, not the reptilian brain, primordial shit, but the higher octave of that, the, the great grandpappy of the fucking reptilian physical brain urges, that energy is larger than life because it's larger than the life that is going on in the earth matrix terrarium and that is his message and um <clears throat> the energy is what creates the life as you know it so uh we're gonna get into some interesting shit in just a second but i want to finish this here so that energy is larger than life and that is what creates life because it's larger than life so life is what is created through the eye of the seeker. The life as you know it is created from that larger than life perspective because you're larger than whatever the fuck is going on in 3D um, terrarium. And so that is how one must create ideally. Okay, that's what Marduk wants me to let you know. I promise this is getting into Jupiter, Sagittarius, ninth house. I promise you, you know, we meander along all the time, but we fucking get the job done. So okay so um yes now we have um okay yes here's what i was going to talk about now so when marduk is you know thank you marduk he came through i was channeling him so he was showing me <laughs> parallelogram okay uh that's what he was showing me and this has to do with everything that i just spoke about the parallelogram so uh, let's see. Okay. So the parallelogram, 
basically a parallelogram is like a rectangle that's sort of like stretched out okay it's like stretched out but it's sort of like um I don't know it's like an angular rectangle I guess so it kind of looks like a diamond shaped rectangle if that makes sense and uh, let's see I, I had a lot Ooh, I channeled a whole big old paragraph here let me just try to condense it so I can explain it um, so picture a parallelogram which is basically a rectangle but it, it's not even it's like this it's even on the like the two sides here are even the two sides here are even but they're slanted these two horizontal vertical these two vertical ones are like sort of slanted like they're trying to become horizontal and then the two on top are just horizontal but because of the angle one line of the parallelogram looks like it's gaining momentum and one looks like it's falling behind that's the way that he showed it to me and I will get more into that because it's, it's just important for me to convey this message because this is what has to do with reality creation and seeing with the eye and and like we get in there okay i'm telling you because when i channel it comes through like but then it's like to actually explain it, it takes a little bit of time okay so we're picturing a parallelogram and uh so okay so then he was explaining to me what the parallelogram is and then you know i wanted to look up why the fuck is parallelogram coming up when i'm channeling marduk and when we're supposed to be talking about astrology and all this shit but um okay so what this brought me to was that um the parallelogram it's equal and even right like these two uh horizontal lines they're equal right they're the exact same measurement but one looks like it's a head just because the shape is on a slant the two to the side are on a slant as well but they're the same length okay <laughs> and so when I looked up parallelogram it was important for me to understand that so I could discuss different planes of existence so they're equal right everything is equal in the parallelogram but it's just from the perspective because it's slanted it looks like one is gaining momentum ahead it's sort of like the point and one looks like it's lagging behind, right? Those are the different planes of existence. And when one is in the process of manifesting, jumping timelines, it will seem like that. Uh, it will seem like one timeline is ahead or behind another timeline, but they're all equal, they're all together. So the parallelogram, as Marduk explains to me, is representative of jumping timelines based upon what you see and how you create your reality and you are either looking at the parallelogram as this next timeline is going to be ahead put you forward or this uh, new timeline that you want to jump to is going to set you back a little bit okay that's that's the dynamic of the parallelogram that's what he wants you to say and um okay so then i looked up parallelogram and then I came to the word prism, okay? So a parallelogram basically creates a prism, and I do not know shit about geometry or science or any of that. So this is kind of just what, what I took from it. A parallelogram is, uh, it creates a prism, and what happens is that um, a parallelogram, if you want to think of it, like let's say now a parallelogram is not just a 2D object, but now it's like, a, a, a physically tangible thing okay and this is uh this is what i was looking at this also has to do with marduk thunderstorms after a thunderstorm a lot of times you will see a rainbow a rainbow that's how it's all connected mm -hmm. a rainbow is created by the prism of water droplets that are essentially parallelograms and because of the way that they're shaped they're three-dimensional water droplet parallelograms now light is being reflected and it's the colors of the rainbow right uh the seven colors of the rainbow you know seven chakras you know seven right seven days of fucking creation you know number seven is fucking sacred but you already know that so basically what he was showing me because i had to go through all these definitions so i could understand so i could explain it so the parallelogram let's say now there's like a, a you know parallelogram shape in the ethers and depending on how you look at it 
through the third eye, now you're looking at that parallelogram and what is being projected out is the rainbow. So the rainbow, does it really exist or is it a projection from the parallelogram? And this is how we got prism and uh, you know the, the particles of light, okay? Because it's not necessarily that the rainbow is there, that it physically tangibly exists, but it is an optical illusion. So that's why Marduk, when that motherfucker come through as a force of nature and a motherfucking lightning bolt thunderstorm, and then after the fucking thunderstorm, you see the fucking rainbow, that, as he's letting me know, is uh, symbolism for when you are looking at something, when you're looking at the different timelines, as I said with the parallelogram and the lines, they're all equal. Every motherfucking timeline is equal. A lot of the this, uh, beings that I channel, they say that everything is equal. It's just your perception. So this is just the way Marduk is explaining it. But he's saying you're looking at all of them. And one timeline might seem like it's ahead. And one might seem like it's behind. Just on the way that the light from your third eye is looking at whatever the parallelogram, the prism is, and now you are projecting with your third eye that which you want to see as a hologram, just like the rainbow comes out after the thunderstorm. It's not that the water droplets are the rainbow. I mean, they are, but they, they're projected outward, just like a projector in a fucking old school movie theater, right? You have like the projector and it's showing it on the screen, all of the colors that are possible, all of the colors of the rainbow that are possible, as Marta conveyed to me, you have the droplet, which is a, a parallelogram, okay? It, it's clear, it has no rhyme or reason, but it's just there's so many facets to it, right? Which that's what makes the prism, the different facets. So now, depending on which one you concentrate on, you're looking at it, You're creating the rainbow. You're creating every possibility that which you focus on from the third eye for you to see as a hologram in front of you with your two eyes. I, mean, I think that made sense, but I have like a big old paragraph here. So let me just uh, double check to see if there's anything I missed. So, okay. So he was talking about, well, he wasn't talking about, but he guided me to fucking research this so then i was looking at a prism and refraction i'm gonna be quite honest i don't you know i'm not a science motherfucker i don't really care about technical shit so i'm not really even sure about refracting and like all the technical terms but it, it's basically from what he was showing it's like uh it, it's refraction right it's it's um it's redesigned outward from the point that it's being observed because the, the prism has different sides and they're all available to you, but what you choose to focus on, whatever timeline, that any possibility is going to come out, but the one that you focus on is what's gonna be reflected, refracted back to you. That's the one that's going to come out, okay? So uh, let me just see refraction. I just wanna like see if I can clarify this. Re refraction okay yeah so here we go this is this is why they wanted me to this is why he wanted me to look it up uh were they i mean i you know i channel a lot of different individuals so uh so refraction the factor phenomenon of light light waves this is why radio waves it's a wave everything is a wave we get down to double slit experiment quantum physics everything is a wave so you the interface between, okay. I'm just trying to understand. I'm, I'm, I'm so, this is, this is legit how I fucking roll. I'm all over the place, but it's cool. Okay, interface between one medium and another through a medium of varying density. Okay, so the medium of uh, the interface, right? The refraction, if we wanna think of it, okay. Um, Measurement of focusing characteristics of an eye or eyes change in direction of propagation. And you could look up the definition. I'm just saying it out loud because it's going to help me to understand it so I can explain it from the perspective that I'm conveying here. So basically, refraction as what he is conveying to me with that example, what I gave you with the timelines, the parallelogram and the prism, the rainbow, all that's a, hologra hol <laughs> it's a holographic fucking image. 
that is presented when you have that uh, energetic up uptick, right, from the thunderstorm. The thunderstorm, it's electrically charged. I love me a good thunderstorm, homie homes. It's electrically charged. You're charged up and then it's a force of nature and then you decide whatever color of the rainbow you want to experience next and the rainbow as he's conveying to me is a metaphor for the light that you are shining upon whatever timeline that you wish to experience but all the timelines are equal it can just seem like one is ahead of the other and one is behind the other so these are waves these are energetic waves uh you know light waves radio waves it's all waves with, with the quantum mechanics so it's passing obliquely through the interface it's passing through the prism the parallelogram right if we think of it it's a multifaceted thing but it really doesn't have a color it's just clear it's crystal clear but the eye the eye says hmm i want something reflected back to me from this angle Oh, now I want something reflected back to me from that angle. And you see all of the angles of something, but they're all equally available to you. That is how you see. And now, uh, you know, and it's just so funny because even in the definition, it says measurement of the focusing characteristics of an eye or eyes, right? So you have one eye and then you have the two eyes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, that, that's how, what he wants me to let you know about the force of nature, why he's connected with the thunderstorm and the rainbow and the refraction right with with the jupiter and all that so the force of nature comes through right uh you uh, you calling upon marduk you embracing that marduk energy within yourself you having governed full full control over your primitive reptilian brain now you are operating from the perspective of the eye so now you also uh like you govern your reptilian brain you don't necessarily give in to like the primeval urges now you govern the primeval urges of the soul so it's like the higher octave of that okay and so when we're talking about the rainbow after the thunderstorm okay and this is why he's associated because jupiter is like basically the same thing as marduk so it's just like a comparison but jupiter energy astrologically remember uh we talked about the rainbow the prism i'm a force of nature i create what i see i make rainbows in the sky whatever the fuck right that's the confidence of jupiter now we're gonna move in like we're gonna associate marduk with the uh jupiter in astrology just because jupiter the god is the equivalent of marduk okay so now we have all of that we're looking at different timelines but you embracing the energy the power of jupiter you realize that it always comes down to you so Jupiter, astrologically, he creates possibilities everywhere because he's looking at it and whatever is being reflected back to him, it's a rainbow. Everything looks nice, okay? So he could pick this timeline, he could pick that timeline, he could skate through different dimensions and shit. That is the energy of Jupiter. Let me just take a sip of my lecture. I fucking forgot. Okay, so Jupiter is, um, okay, so Jupiter is looking at this prism, at this parallelogram, and he's seeing that all of the possibilities are like fucking magical rainbows, right? That's the energy of Jupiter. That's why Jupiter is considered like the free gift or like the lucky, I don't know, the lucky... Was he considered the lucky something in astrology, right? Uh, the planet of luck and good fortune and abundance, right? Because he sees while he's looking at that rainbow through the observation of the eye. Now he knows what he wants to get uh, projected outward to him so he can see it with his two eyes. That whole refraction spiel that I fucking went on. And so because jupiterian energy oh yes jupiter motherfucking terian energy sees possibilities all over the place he he charges up in shit like a force of nature like those that have a prominent jupiter in their chart all they see is possibilities like that's all they see they don't see negativity they see even with that parallelogram 
example that even the timeline that appears to be behind maybe there's something back there that he wants to go back in that timeline or he wants to slow things down a bit or if he wants to progress forward with this new timeline but he knows that all of them are equal and the rainbow the you know that that's representative of all the light waves right the colors that's representative of every possibility he sees every possibility he knows that all of them will benefit him because he's looking at it from the enlightened perspective of the reptilian uh aspect of energy which is why marduk you know he's conquered the mishushu dragon because uh the mishushu dragon i'm just trying to play this song over again Whew. okay so he's He's conquered the aspects of the Mishushu dragon, right? The reptilian uh, portion. So now there's nothing that, that he fears uh, at all in his physical realm, right? The primordial fears and lower density energy and whatever. Because he sees possibilities. He says, even if this timeline is a little bit behind that timeline, they're all equal. And maybe it'll benefit me to, to slow things down over here. Maybe it'll benefit me to, to speed things up over here because he sees the rainbow. He sees every single possibility through the prism of the third eye. So Jupiterian energy, that is why astrologically, he's, he's kind of mastered himself. So he has a, a confidence that that's why Jupiter and Saturn are the intermediate planets in astrology, right? Because then we have the outers, not archaically or in the Vedic system, but then we have the outers, okay? Uh, and those are the universal planets, but then we have the inners, Jupiter and Saturn, in my view, what is conveyed to me is that they, they're like, um, they're the intermediates because they're the bridge betwixt, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the ego and the ethers, they, they are the bridge, the two of them. So, uh, I have a shit ton of videos on Lord Saturn. So if you want to check those out, go ahead right now. We're talking about Jupiter. So Jupiter is the equivalent of Saturn, only Jupiter's energy is, is just where Saturn would see like a, Saturn would, would stay uh, true to something that, that has um, been, been tried before, right? Just whatever, like, okay, well, this is what, what's been going on. It, like he wants to stay on one path. He gets where he needs to go, but he's like, well, this is it. I'm upholding the path, the path I shall follow. That's what it is, right? Jupiter is like, well, what if I go over here? Thinking about the different aspects of the rainbow. Like there are possibilities everywhere where Saturn is more like, I'm just going to follow this one path and I'm going to perfect that one path. Jupiter is equal to Saturn, but he, he uh, he's more like many paths, right? That's why he governs Sagittarius, which is a mutable sign, and the ninth house, which is a mutable sign house because he sees possibilities everywhere and he too just like saturn is associated with like a life purpose uh where saturn is more the energy of uh, agreements that you made prior to entering the vessel jupiter is the same thing it's like agreements that you made but it's it's areas that you don't mind venturing off into uncharted territory in the area of Jupiter, whereas Saturn, you're going to want to stay, stay set, tried and true in that area. So you can spiral cyclical motion with Saturn, spiral upward. You, you want to perfect and improve that one area. Jupiter is like the area where Jupiter is in the chart. It's like, well, I see possibilities all over the place. Jupiter is going to start new shit. He's going to go off in different directions, whereas Saturn is more, let's just perfect this one thing. We want to perfect it. Jupiter is like, shit is already perfect, motherfucker. I'm here to have some fun. That's the energy of Jupiter, okay? And uh, let's see what else we have here. So, um, okay. So is there anything else Jupiter wants you to say? What Marduk wants me to know about Jupiter? Maybe Jupiter is going to come in now. I don't know. I never know how these things are going to go. But that is basically the energy of Jupiter. So he's more of like the area in someone's chart where they are, um, they're likely to just feel generally more confident. Whereas Saturn, the area in the chart, it's not that they're insecure there, but it's just they're always looking for perfection. So they could come through with their Saturn placements, whatever, secure as fuck, but the they, they're going to want to keep that that same path, that straight path. They're going to want to keep 
moving and perfecting it and perfecting it and cycling upward. Whereas Jupiter is like, I'm confident this is my shit. Oh, let me go over here today. Let me go over there today. But it's in that same general area. Okay, so um, Jupiter in the natal chart is just going to bestow this natural affability and confidence because of all the reasons that I just said. You know, I don't really remember much of what I said, but that's basically why. Because Jupiter, the, the metaphor of Jupiter, he's already conquered like the... Uh, the fear. Whew, he's already that, that was a message for someone. That shit flew. Uh, he's already conquered the fear aspect, whereas like Saturn energy is more like Saturn ain't afraid of shit, but the ego is more going to be associated with a wanting to strive for more so there could be a slight perception of lack in that area earlier along someone's journey whereas the energy of jupiter from the ego perspective earlier along in someone's journey they're not even going to question that area right they're not even going to question it. their ego uh, they might be overly enthusiastic about themselves in that area to the point of you know cockiness okay they could they could i'm just saying there's you know there, there's positives and negatives light side shadow side to everything okay so the area where jupiter is and it's not even it's like okay jupiter the energy of jupiter cockiness when someone is like i know i'm the shit in whatever area jupiter is it's not even a cockiness where motherfuckers are gonna like hate on Jupiter. It's like a cockiness where they're like, oh shit, I can't believe this motherfucker just said that. But you know, that's kind of true, right? Like it, it's gonna uh, get get brushed over easily because Jupiter, because it does represent Sagittarius and the mutable quality, it's like, uh, it's not rigid where Saturn, Saturn is cardinal. Saturn just wants to push forward. Jupiter is like, yeah, I'm the shit. All right, now what? I ain't saying you're not the shit, but I know I'm the shit. Whereas Saturn is just like, I'm the shit. And like, if someone wants to add, oh, I'm the shit too, then Saturn would be like, mm, maybe. You know, but it's like, you see the difference? That's the easiest way I can describe it here. So I want to keep focus on Jupiter. So the Jupiter energy in the natal chart, because they've mastered those uh, aspects of that um that portion of their chart they don't necessarily feel that they want to strive to perfect in that area mutable remember mutable energy they'd rather just okay well let me you know what i'm gonna paint a house today you know what tomorrow i'm gonna fucking rent a jumbo jet and fly it you know like they're just all over they're they're constantly wanting to try something new so the area where jupiter in the natal chart is because that confidence is already there it's something that you're likely to already notice as like a gift in your own self from your egoistic humanoid perspective because we're talking about you know tropical astrology personality astrology so this is also associated with the ego but it's like the ego morphing into something where now jupiter also wants to expand so when jupiter's walking around and he's popping his fucking collar and he's like i'm the shit but that doesn't mean that you ain't he's sharing his knowledge with others in a way that it is it's not coming off like he's trying to teach a hard lesson like Saturn, right? Because that's what Saturn is associated with as well. Like, you better learn the lesson. Jupiter is like, he's more fluid. He's like, well, if you see what I see, that's great. If you don't, maybe you'll see it sometime in the future. Remember that parallelogram um, timeline that I gave, right? Because Jupiter is looking at it. I don't know why parallel take a shot every time I fucking say parallelogram okay um but either which way so from that perspective Jupiter is recognizing all the timelines he doesn't give a shit he's not trying to just you know keep excelling and, and spiraling upward he's more about I'm gonna share the wisdom over here I'm gonna share the wisdom over there right and that that is energy of Jupiter so with Jupiter if if we want to think of that in terms of seeing possibilities everywhere now we're going to take it down into the next branch which is going to be Sagittarius because Sagittarius uh, the key word of Sagittarius is I see so what do we talk about with the refraction and the prism and all of that you see with the third eye because ninth house Sagittarius this is more of the uh, universal 
aspects in astrology, right? We have the first six or more personal, and we have uh, the following six of the 12 signs that are more universal, like out there. So uh, Sagittarius is I see. So that's why it's Sagittarian energy, wherever you have that in your chart, you're just going to see possibilities everywhere. You're not even going to you're not going to exude a lot of effort and you're just going to chill. You're going to be fluid. You're going to flow because remember Sagittarius is a mutable sign. They see because they're governed by Jupiter, they see possibilities everywhere. So now they're taking that energy of Marduk and the energy of Jupiter, um, Apollo, Zeus, whatever, right? They're taking that energy, that, that larger than life energy, and they're sharing it all over the place, which is why Sagittarius is... Uh, they they have this sort of persona where it's like they're very knowledgeable, but not in a way where it's rigid. Like they're they're knowledgeable in like a comedic way. I want to say I don't know. Okay, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Like uh, because you know the opposite of the ninth house is the third house, which is Gemini, which is right like like personal personal knowledge, right? Uh, personal things around you and your immediate environment. Sagittarius energy is the same thing, knowledgeable about things that are not necessarily in your immediate environment physically, but they're just sort of like uh, either a collective belief or the Sagittarians own personal belief systems that they, they just, they take different ideologies and they, again, with that all over the place, that prism, they're looking, hmm, today I want to see this, I want to experience the, the blue ring of the rainbow hmm now i want to experience the green ring of the rainbow right they're picking and choosing from that uh that higher octave energy the thunderstorm force of nature they're like hmm with my eye what do i want to see displayed in front of me today right and then they look whoo beautiful rainbow you know what let's try purple right now oh let's try red and this is a metaphor for their different philosophies so that's why a lot of strong Sagittarian influence they they like to to travel I mean travel in their mind uh you know travel consciously travel physically whatever but they want to keep exploring new things they're not necessarily set out in the same path like Saturn where Saturn wants to just remember dead straight pin straight that line where they they just want to keep perfecting spiraling upward in that area Sagittarius energy and here's the difference is that the Sagittarius energy, wherever uh, Sagittarius is placed in your chart, yes, it's one placement, okay? So the focal point could be, if you have fourth house, Sagittarius, let's just say as an example, the, the, the Sagittarius energy is gonna be all over the place, but in the focal point of the fourth house. So the fourth house has to do with home and, and you know, immediate environments, things that make them feel uh, nurtured and secure on an emotional level, right? So someone with Sagittarius, fourth house as an example, whereas let's say Saturn uh, was, or Capricorn, fourth, you know, whatever, we're, just, we're using them interchangeably, but you could say the same thing for Jupiter in the fourth house, or you could say the same thing for Sagittarius, fourth house, you know, they're, remember, they're just, it, it's like the big brother, the little brother, the tiny brother okay that's how that's how i look at them all right so the difference is that a saturnian or capricorn influence the one to strive and perfect that one area of the house where where that placement is where that planet is jupiter they're not going to care so much about the perfection as much as they're going to care about the different methods that they can do so let's say with this with the fourth house sagittarius energy the, the home and hearth, okay? How they feel emotionally comfortable and secure. Hmm, today what makes me feel secure? I'm gonna sip a tea. Hmm, tomorrow I might feel secure taking a nice warm bubble bath, right? Like, it's gonna vary and it, there, it, it's not gonna be a set point. So they're going to, remember, because this is mutable energy, they see possibilities everywhere. They're, they're not gonna care about perfecting a technique that they already know, like Saturn. They're gonna be more like, I haven't tried this before and they they rush in right and they're like hmm you know what because remember the the archer right with the fucking bow and arrow he's like setting his he's like oh there's a destination i want to go and then the horse legs fucking carry him there right that's sagittarius they just charge forward in the direction that they see that they want to go that's what they're called i see so fourth house sagittarius you could do this for any house where you have sagittarius you know 
because uh, it's going to be along the lines of the house that Sagittarius or Jupiter is in, but it's going to be in different ways of going about it. As I said, one day it might, you're comfortable in your fourth house Sagittarius energy. I'm going to drink some tea the next day. I'm going to take a bubble bath the next day. I'm going to turn off all the lights, whatever, right? Like they're going to do something different and they're not going to be apprehensive from an ego standpoint to try different things in that area. Whereas Saturn, like let's say if Saturn, I'm just, I want to show you just so I can compare the two energies because uh, if Sagittarius is focused in one area, it is going to be that one area that they're focused on, but there's going to be the different methods of going about that. Whereas Saturn, let's say if Saturn was fourth house, Today, to make me feel secure in my home and nurtured, I'm going to sip some chamomile tea, right? Hmm, I can perfect this. Tomorrow, I'm going to try chamomile tea with a little bit of honey, right? Like they're gonna, it, it's like they're gonna wanna perfect one thing that they already sees works. Whereas Jupiter Sagittarius, they're gonna be like, what makes me feel secure? Makes you feel nurtured. Hmm. Well, bubble bath today. Maybe running around fucking ass naked tomorrow. Whatever. Like they're not gonna. Like, do you see the difference? I think that was a, that was a pretty interesting analogy there with the, the chamomile tea and shit. But uh, do you see the difference? Because it is going to be for the Sagittarius energy. It still is going to. Holy shit! Come on, motherfucker. Uh, so it is going to be the same focus, like what's going to make you feel secure in your home environment, but it, there's going to be different trying out of different things, whereas the Saturn is going to be, they're going to try to perfect something that they already know makes them feel secure, right? That That's really the main difference, okay? Which is why I, I just see them as too interchangeable here. So with the Sagittarius, I see because they see possibilities everywhere. There's nothing that is foreign to them because remember as we as we move along into like the ninth house it's like um you know ideas and philosophies that are not native to the seeker they're different ideologies but none of them are going to appear foreign or alien to the sagittarius because the sagittarius energy is going to embrace them all because nothing is foreign to fucking jupiter like does that make sense? Because Jupiter, because he got that cocky, confident motherfucking swag. He's walking in and he's like, I own the room, motherfucker. I am a force of nature. Remember that thunderstorm of Marduk with the scene the prism. I see possibilities here. I see possibilities there. I see possibilities in every motherfucking where. That's, that's Jupiter, okay? For the reason that I said, because he's, he's seeing all timelines, all colors of the rainbow, he sees, but then he's like, what do I want to experience now with my two eyes? Let me go over here. So Jupiter Sagittarius energy, and I'm not talking about if someone's an introvert or an extrovert, so uh, just use this analogy as you see fit. But Jupiter could walk in the room. He sees, he walks in the fucking party by himself. He sees group of motherfuckers over here, group of motherfuckers over there. And he all he sees is possibilities. He doesn't see anyone that is unknown to him even though they might technically be unknown but because he's a member opposite of uh, interpersonal information third house gemini is outer personal information ninth house sagittarius okay so he's like well that's someone that they might interest me because they're different so let me get to know them or have a conversation or whatever because then maybe I can see where, like like their ideas, right? It, it, it's like that. Like they want to explore things that are foreign to them because they don't view them as foreign. They view it as something that they can add to their mental database because they see possibilities everywhere. So they're they're gonna really go into something strong Sagittarian energy, strong Jupiter, strong ninth house. They're going to go into something with that figurative open arms type of energy where they're like, hey, you know, I got this, right? Because they're looking at it from the perspective of I am a force of nature. And like, if I see possibilities everywhere, then what, what's going to fucking re be reflected back to me in that hologram? More possibilities. And then it goes on and on. Like, it, and it's mutable. That's why the, when I was saying the Sagittarian energy, they walk into a party and they could they could be joining this group of motherfuckers over here, then after a few minutes they join that group of motherfuckers over there, and like they'll just go from one to another, 
and they'll just collect different information, right, about like different, different anything, okay? It could be ideas, it could be viewpoints, um, you know, it could be like like religious or, or moral beliefs or cultural beliefs or whatever the fuck, right? They're not going to really care about that. But at the same time, uh, Sagittarian energy, you're not, like, it's not typically an energy where they're going to try to infringe their beliefs on you. But, you know, because we have the two, two sides of the pole, it's like Sagittarian energy it does not want, like, they're open to all these type of beliefs, but they're not going to have someone force their own beliefs on the Sagittarian energy because they're the philosophers, so they see possibilities. So they'll they'll take in what someone has to say even if they don't agree with it they might have a debate they might not you know they might not give a shit whatever but you're not gonna force something on a force of nature do you see what i'm saying so it's like if you have a lot of sagittarius in your chart or if you know anyone that does and and he, he i think you know what i'm talking about it's like they'll be open to it but they're they're like they're gonna be easy going unless you try to box them into something that is going to try to force them to not have other possibilities because they, that, that, that goes against the very existence of their force of nature because they see possibilities everywhere. So it's, it's like you're not going to infringe any type of belief system on a strong Jupiter, a strong Sagittarius, a strong ninth house, no matter what sector that might be in, like, you know, personally or career or money or anything that would have to do with what the collective is doing. They're just, they're going to take in what, what they take in and they're going to let go what they're going to let go what they're you're not going to box Sagittarian energy is like Sagittarius they are known as like the you know the wanderer the nomad the things like that because they don't want to be stuck in one place so it's important with the Sagittarius energy like uh, there's this fucking meme oh my god this is so funny and it's so funny that thank you Jupiter and Saturn so there's this meme and it's basically it's like a dude and um, his daughter and they are in like a log flume and like the dude is like holding on like this and then the daughter is like and I I saw so I don't know if it's true but they said the backstory was that um, the daughter was like oh I want to use this and make it a meme and he was like okay like that's what I heard anyway um, so basically it's the dude and he's in the log flume and he's like holding on like whoa and then the daughter is just like the hands up smiling right and then um the meme, it said, you know, with the hands up smiling, um, Sagittarius on their way to a new country with no source of income or something. And then the one with the dude sitting like rigid, like, oh, it's a Capricorn. Capricorn on a new route to work. And it was just so funny. And like, that personifies the fucking energy of Jupiter and Saturn. So with the Sagittarius, they have this reputation as an eternal wanderer because they see possibilities everywhere. So they're not going to be fenced in. They're just like open arms, like woohoo, like, like front row, hands up, the cheese smiling. Don't care where the log flume is even going because of the possibilities that they see. They see every color of the motherfucking beautiful rainbow through the prism, through the medium, the third eye, right? They see it and then they're, um, bending the hologram to their wishes no matter what timeline because all timelines are created equal but they see possibilities in all the timelines so that they come through they're the force of nature so they're like yo if i'm a force of nature then nature gonna line up to what i i want with it right because that that's what it is so uh, that's a very good example of the you know the difference of the saturn and jupiter energy even though the two of them because they are the interpersonal planets that they they're similar, but they have a different way of going about, which I mentioned before, which I don't even remember what the fuck I said. But that's why this is being filmed, so that if you need to, like, rewind, you can see. Um, okay, so I spoke of the parallelogram, the mind's eye, the rainbow. Okay, so now we got up into... Yes, okay. So we got into... Now, the definition of philosophy is really like love of wisdom right so that sort of embodies like uh you know all of the the traits right they love learning new things it's like they have like that's their whole thing like the philosopher okay and uh they love learning new things and new experiences because they feel that every experience they can take the good out of that situation that it's it's optimism in in strong jupiter sagittarius ninth house optimism is I, I mean they got a lot of it okay because 
They can even take a situation that wasn't so pleasant, but because it, the, you know, Jupiter, Sagittarian, ninth house dominant motherfucker, because they saw it with, with like a beneficial lens, then what was reflected back to them became more beneficial because of their projection onto it. And this is like just basic science of, you know, quantum mechanics and law of attraction, law of assumption, but that's basically what happens. So, um, all things to a Sagittarian heavy, it can be seen as beneficial, right? And, and they can experiment and do this and do that. And they're like, oh, well, you know what? That worked out kind of weird, but ah, fuck it. This is what I learned. And then they just, they, they move on. They don't necessarily try to perfect it. Whereas like Saturn, Capricorn, 10th house would be, well, I learned this. But let me go deeper into that topic so I can perfect it. It's like Sagittarius, ah, yeah, I learned some shit. Ah, whatever. I'm going to go over here and learn some more things. Like it, it's like a different, I think you think you catch my drift. Um, so now ninth house, if someone has like a, you know, a prominent ninth house, so this is going to be more about their outer belief systems, um, the way that they present their ideas. So we're, we're, you know, we're taking it down from Jupiter. Then now we have uh, Sagittarius. They see possibilities everywhere. Now ninth house is really philosophies and things that I said are like, uh, different to them but it's not really different because they're not seeing the difference there they're seeing what they have already incorporated into themselves with something new and then they can blend together different philosophies so this is why like a prominent ninth house this is this might be someone who has a whole lot of different uh like they I have Sagittarius rising, so I could say this is true for me. I have Sagittarius ninth house, but um, I see truth and lies in everything. <laughs> okay, like like I'm not going to say that one way is is the exact way because I I agree with some of the stuff, but I but I also see lies in it. Right, so someone with strong Sagittarius, strong ninth house, their philosophies, their ideals. They'll see truth in, let's just say, for example, they see, they can agree with something in one religion, but if someone asks them, what religion do you practice? They'll be like, I don't practice religion. They're like, but you agreed with X, Y, Z of that religion. They're like, yeah, I do. And they're like, but you just said you don't affiliate with the religion. I'm like, I don't. Because I also see what this religion is saying, right? Like that, that's like a stereotypical, right? You know, philosophies, belief systems. It doesn't necessarily have to be religion, but it's just more on like a spiritual level of interacting with the outer realm whereas third house um uh third house gemini is going to be more the ideas of their immediate environment and like those individuals around them the sagittarian energy is like yeah well i, I agree with this person's philosophy but i don't follow it i agree with that person's philosophy but not all of it so and it can seem, because remember, this is ninth house, it's mutable, so it can be seen as fickle, right? Because mutable just means changeable, but it's not fickle in a sense where they have no ethics. It's fickle in a sense where it's like they'll agree with a little bit of this and a little bit of that because that, that's just what, what they see because they have their own philosophies. And this is someone, you know, anyone that has like strong... You know, I, I mentioned that I have Sagittarius rising because Jupiter is also my chart ruler. So if you have Sagittarius rising, you're going to want to pay attention to where Jupiter is in your chart. That's just something else, okay? Uh, but this whole video is really encapsulating the energy of Sagittarius, how it operates. It's, it's like ninth house. You want to think of it like different philosophies. So someone that has a strong Jupiter, Sagittarius, ninth house they are just going to see possibilities everywhere and, and it might make them seem like they don't really have one prerogative and that's really because they don't because they seem to always be off onto you know the next shiny thing and that is precisely why like it's important not to um hold them down with, with your ideals and philosophies okay so i, I mean obviously like physically too they don't like they can uh, literally, um, they could move here, they can move there, and they'll, they'll be at home wherever the fuck they are, right? Like physically, they could travel to a foreign country that they've never been before and they don't know the language and they'll feel, feel at home over there, okay? Because they see possibilities of abundance everywhere. They're not looking at things from 
the glass half empty. It's more like the glass half full. And because th this is tied with ninth house, this has a lot to do with their belief system. So there's someone that they, you know, this is also like a shadow aspect of the Sagittarian ninth house Jupiter energy where they don't want someone to infringe on them. But it, if that energy is like, you know, more leaning on the dark side, it can be, well, if you don't agree with my philosophies, then fuck you, right? Like it can be like, like that as well. So, you know, we want to take a look at both sides of the coin here. It just depends what type of energy that Jupiter, ninth house Sagittarian tends to embrace in, in whatever moment, wherever they're, they're at on their journey, right? So they can be someone who is just like, okay, well, th this is me. And, you know, if, if you don't like, you could go fuck yourself. Like it can be very cut and dry like that, like, because they, they would rather just let go of something that's trying to fence them in rather than try to rectify the situation, if that makes sense, like, um, and especially with their, their ideology. So if let's say, you know, there's a debate like about religious beliefs or whatever, a Sagittarian ninth house, uh, more Sagittarius ninth house rather than probably Jupiter. But I mean, you know, ninth house, this is really someone's like beliefs in what's going on in the collective from an outer sphere. So this is why I'm bringing this up, but this is more along the lines of someone who might have disagreements about uh, someone's religious beliefs or someone's lifestyle philosophies or, or code of conduct. They're, they're more likely to have a disagreement in that area because the way that they live their life is the way that they live their life. And a dark side, yes, they can try to infringe that on someone else, but more often than not, if someone tries to even question, why are you doing that? They're like, because I, I want to. And, and they'll just, they'll be up and out. They'll be ghost before someone could even try to fence them in or question them too much because they eternally question things, but they don't necessarily like being questioned, especially when it's coming from questioning of trying to control them. If you're trying to have a conversation with someone with a strong ninth house, you ask, oh, so why do you believe in this? They'll give you a fucking sermon on why they believe in that. They're, they'll hear you out too, why you believe in that, whatever you believe in. But if you try to question them from a point of, well, if you really believed in this, then you wouldn't do X, Y, Z. They're like, what? Like, oh, hell no, I'm gonna be out, motherfucker. Like, it, it's about the way you're coming at them for the way that they live their life. Uh, I'm sensing, like, you know, unorthodox type of beliefs, uh, spiritualities, uh, practices in terms of that, in terms of what they are doing compared to what the collective is doing. Um, and it, it, that can be an area of someone wanting to use discretion when dealing with, with the Sagittarian Jupiter ninth house dominant individual because they're not, they'd be like, what? Like they're, they're not, they might not even say what they, they probably just gonna ride off on their horse chasing the fucking arrow. Right. And they, they ain't going to look back like, because they don't care. So, and I don't mean that in like a negative way. Like they don't give a fuck about anyone, but it's like. If you try to fence in Sagittarius ninth house Jupiter because they are that force of nature, they're like, you think you're gonna stop me? You think you're gonna stop me from living my life the way that I want to live it in, in terms of their philosophies? Remember, ninth house and higher education where they attain their information about the collective as a whole. Oh, well, you trust that source? Who said I trusted a source? That's my philosophy. That's where I got the information from. It, it's very. Uh, it's like tedious, uh, where you might infringe upon their independent belief systems, which most likely are not going to be congruent with the mainstream because they might take this part of what's going on in the mainstream and that part of what's going on in the mainstream, but they're not gonna pick a lane. And if someone tries to question how come you you don't want to pick a lane then that's the time when they can get offended and they'll leave they'll ride off on their fucking horse say yeah okay that that's like really what what it is with like especially i would say with the ninth house you know even if the ninth house is let's say in taurus it's still going to have that ninth house sagittarian energy to it even if the ninth house is in aries or whatever sign 
any type of belief systems, if you try to, you know, challenge them, if you try to get them to conform to your belief systems, I'm not saying you personally, like, you know what I mean? But just in general, if anyone tries to get them to conform in a certain way, they can be like, what the fuck? And it's going to be expressed in the way that the ninth house would express itself. So if someone does have, um, you know, ninth house Aries, right? It's that Sagittarian energy of like free beliefs and philosophies, right? But it's going to be expressed in Aries way. So, so if someone's like, well, well, why do you believe that? If you really believe that, you would be behaving this way. It's going to come out through the Aries and the Aries would be like, what, you want to fight, motherfucker? Like, it's going to come out like that. Whereas, like, let's say if it was... Uh, if it came out in more of like, um, if the ninth house was, let's say in cancer, it would be more someone taking it emotionally offensive. Do you see what I'm saying? It would just depend on the sign that's in the ninth house, but the ninth house is going to be where you're not going to infringe upon what someone is doing in terms of conducting their own spiritual higher learning practices this this might be someone who let's say they go for five years and they study with monks in tibet you know what i mean uh, why'd you do that because i wanted to oh but if you really wanted to do the what she's saying right like they're gonna it it's gonna be that would be the area where ninth house sagittarian jupiter they can be offended they don't want to be infringed upon because they're not necessarily trying to do that, although it can come out sometimes in the, the shadow aspect. But in reality, it's more about they don't want someone to try to control them, especially in terms of where their, their outer thought processes are about their environment and about the collective as a whole. That's really what, what it is. So let me see. So one last thing that I do want to mention here before we close is that some of you might be interested in horary astrology because the horoscopic astrology system which if you think about it astrology horoscopes right they that's where the word kind of comes from the babylonian system used the horoscopic astrology system which now equates to horary astrology which is really predictive astrology not necessarily like the set birth chart but it's really a picture of the sky uh, at a particular time that you ask a question. So let's say I have a question right now. I'm not going to look at my birth chart or the collective um, chart or anyone else's chart. I'm going to just ask my question and I am going to type it into my astrology software. And then whatever comes out, my answer predictive for the future will be seen in that natal chart but it's not a natal chart that already exists it's a natal chart that exists for the time that i answer my question that i ask my question and then it answers me with that birth chart for a moment that is going to be predictive uh, divining for the future so that's just something that because you know i was looking into marduk and you know ancient babylon and i came across this thing you know horoscopic astrology which is i'm like wait horoscopes ah 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 that makes sense, right? So it's more about um, if you have a question and you want to know the answer, you can use an astrological birth chart to receive guidance in that area. And um, yeah, that that's just kind of I don't know. I feel like that's a message for someone. So if you if you are interested in doing that, all you have to do is just really ask your question and then type in you know what time it is, where you're at, what location you're in right now and the date and then you will receive some guidance in that answer in in the horary chart that's what horary astrology is just just loosely so thank you Marduk um let me just see if I have any other notes that I had okay so I think this is where we're gonna leave off I don't know how long this video uh, is <laughs> but you know freestyle sessions that's how we roll Thank you for joining us on this wonderful stroll today. I am Oculus, the alien next door. We will chit chat again soon.